Okay, chapter six is called Relationships Within Triangles, and then 6.1, Perpendicular and Angle Bisectors. So um, we start off with the Perpendicular Bisector Theorem, and you have to understand what a perpendicular bisector is. We've already defined that earlier in the year, but if you look at segment AB here, this line that I just colored blue is the perpendicular bisector because it cuts it into two congruent segments, and it's perpendicular. Perpendicular bisector, okay? And the idea with the perpendicular bisector theorem is that if you choose a random point on a perpendicular bisector, like this point, I just chose that randomly, right? But I could have put that anywhere on this perpendicular bisector. And I'm gonna call this point C. If I draw a little line segment that connects that point to the endpoints of segment AB, like so, and I get those two little triangles, um, but the idea here is that C is going to be the same distance from those two endpoints. So in other words, AC is going to be congruent to BC. So these two are going to be congruent. And we could actually figure that out using um, the HL theorem with these two right triangles. Um, and we'd have to use the reflexive property. But now we can use the uh, perpendicular bisector theorem really to say the same thing. So it's going to say that um, AC is congruent to BC. So in other words, if you pick any point on a perpendicular bisector of, um, of a, a segment, then it's going to be equidistant from the endpoints of that segment. Okay. So, you know, just to show you again, I could put another point anywhere here. I'll call this point D. And then this is going to be congruent to this, right? Any random point on there, that's going to work, okay? This has a converse. So this says when you have a point that's equidistant from the ends of a segment, so here I've got segment A, B, right? And point C is equidistant from those endpoints. Well, then that means point C is going to be on the perpendicular bisector. So that means that this line has to be the perpendicular bisector, okay? Then line D is the perpendicular bisector. Of segment AB, okay? So in other words, I can use this theorem to say, well, okay, if this is the perpendicular bisector, that means I got a right angle right there. And that also means that these two segments are congruent, right? Because it's going to cut it in half. Okay. All right. Let's move on to first example then. Okay. So um, looking at this situation, I can see, oh, this line is going to be the perpendicular bisector of this segment, right? Because it's perpendicular to it and it cuts it in half. So that means that any point on the perpendicular bisector, like point H, is going to be equidistant from the endpoints. So that means, hey, 2x is going to equal 3x minus 8. So I can set up my equation like so. And then I'm just going to solve for x. So I'll subtract 3x from both sides. And then I can multiply both sides by negative 1 or divide by negative 1, however you want to think of it. x is going to equal 8. I solved for x. Okay. And let's think about this. How was I able to write that equation? How was I able to say this was equidistant from the endpoints? Well, it's going to be one of the two theorems that we already have on the books for this section. So I just have to see, is this the original or is this the converse? Well, I started with a perpendicular bisector. I could see from the beginning that the blue line is the perpendicular bisector. And that's what happens in the original theorem. So this is the perpendicular bisector theorem, okay? You can see in the converse, in the beginning, I added those red marks, but in the beginning, I didn't have that this is the perpendicular bisector. I showed that it was, right? Okay, so this is the perpendicular bisector theorem. Okay, and then let's find HG. Well, there it is, right? But what they mean is what is the um, 
what is the length of that segment, okay? So I can see that HG is going to equal 3x minus 8. This one is dying. And now I've uh, solved for x in part a, so that's 8. And let's see, 24 minus 8. And that's going to be 36. 16, whoa, 16, not 36. So there is the length of HG. Okay, let's move on to the next page. Next up, we've got the angle bisector theorem. I'll leave that on screen for a minute there. Okay. All right, so the angle bisector theorem is a similar kind of idea. So if you look at this picture, we've got an angle bisector in this picture. So seg or this is not a segment, I guess this is a ray. Yeah, you could use segment BD as well. But ray BD here is bisecting that angle because I can see, hey, those two angles are congruent. And then if I choose any point on this line, so I'm going to choose point D because it's conveniently drawn already, okay? but it could be any one on that blue line, it's going to be equidistant from the two sides of the angle. So I'm thinking about the distance from this orange dot to this line. Well, that distance is going to be the shortest possible distance, which means it's the perpendicular distance. So if this is the perpendicular distance, and then this is the perpendicular distance there, then those two distances are going to be congruent. Okay? So the moral of the story here is point D is, is going to be um, equidistant to the two sides of the angle. That means that, that um, DA would be congruent to DC. Okay? And you can, again, use this with any point on an angle bisector. So let me just choose this point randomly. Then I could say, well, this distance and this distance have to be congruent, okay? Any point on that angle bisector will work, okay? And this again has a converse. So let's look at the converse. Okay, so this one I can see that point D is equidistant from the two sides in the beginning. So then that's telling me, well, then point D is gonna have to be on the angle bisector. Okay, so that means that those two angles are going to be congruent. So I'll call this top one ABD, angle ABD, and I'll call the bottom one CBD, and they're congruent to each other. Okay, so in other words, if a point is equidistant from the two sides of an angle, then it must be on the angle bisector of that angle. All right, and let's try this out with an example. Okay, so um, we're gonna solve for x, so let's look at this picture. I can see that this is the angle bisector. So let's think if this is gonna be the original theorem or the converse one that I'm gonna use to set up my equation. So if we look at our two options, so let me zoom out here. If we look at our two options, um, on the original one, I started with the angle bisector. Those two angles were marked congruent at the beginning of the picture, right? So that same thing is happening here. So that means I'm going to use the um, angle bisector theorem, the original one, not the converse. The converse is where I'm showing something's an angle bisector. Here I already know it's an angle bisector, and I'm going to do something with that. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, any point on that angle bisector, like point M, is going to be equidistant from the two sides of the angle. And I can see, hey, that's a perpendicular distance, so is this. So that means 4x is going to equal 2x plus 12. Okay, I'll just subtract 2x from both sides. And then I'll divide by 2. And x equals 6. Okay, and then sometimes 
you're looking for x, sometimes you're looking for um, a, some other value in the, um, in the diagram. Here we're looking for jm. Well, here it is. Right? But that's going to have a length of 4x. And I already figured out that x was 6. So this is going to be 24 units then. Okay. All right, and then let's move on to one more example. This one is going to be the most involved, but it's not too bad. This last one. Okay, so on the last page of uh, these notes, this says write the equation of the perpendicular bisector of a line segment with these two endpoints. Okay, so what I'm going to do is draw myself a little picture. It's not required, but it I think it's really helpful to just make yourself a little sketch so you can organize your thinking. So I'm going to have this be the um, segment that's getting bisected. So that's going to have these two endpoints. So I'm not putting this on an XY axis. You certainly could, but it's not necessary here. Um, so I'm just going to say there's the endpoints of that segment. Okay. And then we're going to write the equation of the perpendicular perpendicular bisector of this. So I'm just going to sketch in what that would look like. Well, here is the perpendicular bisector, right? I've got it marked as a bisector and as perpendicular, okay? So um, what I want to do in order, I'm trying to write the equation of the red line, and what I want to do is find um, two things. I want to find a point that's on this line. Well, hey, can't we find this point? Sure we can. That's going to be the midpoint of that line segment. Then I'll have a point that's on the red line. Okay, so let's start by finding the midpoint. Okay, and I'm going to use the midpoint formula. My midpoint is going to be the average of the x's and the average of the y's. Average the two x's, average the two y's. Okay, so if I call this um, my first x and my, my first y. And this can be the second x, the second y. I'm going to plug in those numbers into the formula. Negative 1 and 3 for my x's. And 4 and negative 6 for the y's. Okay. Often I see people subtracting in these, and I think think maybe people are thinking of the distance formula where you're subtracting x's and y's or maybe the slope formula but we're just averaging the x's and y's here so you wouldn't do any subtracting here okay all right so i mean i guess you could think of that as four minus six but you're just adding a negative right so um this is going to be two over two and negative two over two i'll simplify that one negative one okay so let's put that in the picture now i've got that point. Okay, so that's good news. I'm closer than to being able to write the equation of this line. Okay, so um, now what I'm going to do is find the slope of the red line. Okay, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to find the slope of this segment first. Okay, so I'm going to call the purple piece the old line, and I'm going to find the slope of that. Okay, so remember slope is going to look like this. Okay, so I'm going to subtract my y's, negative 6 minus 4 for the numerator, and 3 minus negative 1 in the denominator. Okay, all right, I'm just going to move down here. So I'll start simplifying that. That's going to be negative 10, and that'd be 3 plus 1, so 4. Okay, so now a little. And then that's going to simplify to negative 5 halves. Okay. Now, I know that these two lines are going to be perpendicular to each other. So the red line, look at that, I switched to red pen to make it super clear. So clever. Okay. So these are going to be perpendicular to each other. And if you remember about perpendicular lines, they're going to have opposite reciprocal slopes. Okay. So that means you take your fraction flip it upside down, that gives you the reciprocal. So two 
two fifths, and then you take the opposite. So since it's negative, I want it to be positive. That means the opposite reciprocal of negative five halves is going to be positive two fifths. Okay. So now when I look what I've, I've, uh, I'll call this line M. Okay. If I look at line M, I've got now, uh, actually, let me use a different letter here. I'll call this line N because M could be for the slope. I'll call this line N. So line N, I've got a point, I've got a through point and I've got a slope. Okay. Um, so my through point, I'll just list that down here. Now I've got enough information to write the equation of that line. So we're kind of bringing in a lot of old, um, an old knowledge that we have. Okay. So how are we going to write this? Well, there are a couple different ways. What I'm going to do is think about writing this in slope intercept form. Okay. So slope intercept form is going to look like this. Okay. Y equals MX plus B. So I just need to figure out what the M and the B are. Wait a second, I already know what the M is. It's gonna be two fifths. Okay, so this is gonna be Y equals two fifths X plus or minus something. So really all I need to do then is figure out what this is, okay? What I see some people do is just plug in one of these numbers because they're not sure what to do, but um, it's not quite that simple. What I wanna do is use this X, Y pair, okay? So I'm going to plug everything into y equals mx plus b. Okay, so y is going to be negative 1. The slope is going to be 2 fifths. x is positive 1. And now I can solve this for b. Okay. So let's clean this up a little bit. 2 fifths times 1 is just 2 fifths. Okay, I'm going to subtract 2 fifths from both sides. But when I take negative one and I subtract two fifths from it, I'm gonna need a common denominator, right? So I'm just gonna rewrite negative one as negative five over five, right? Because that is negative one. And that makes it a little easier when I'm gonna subtract two fifths from both sides, okay? So, ah, let me just get rid of that. Yeah, that's okay. I'm not gonna write minus two fifths, minus two fifths. I'm gonna subtract two fifths from both sides to isolate the B, right? I just rewrote the negative one as negative five fifths. Okay, now I've got a common denominator, negative five minus two, it's gonna be negative seven. Now I've got the B value, right? And that's what I was looking for. So now I can finish writing the equation. So I'll do that right there. And there we go, okay? So um, I found the slope just using the old slope, but then I had to still find the y-intercept by plugging everything into y equals mx plus b, okay? And that is it for today. See you next time.